What's good with y'all, man? My name is Tej. In this video, I'm going to show y'all how to make a vibey and ambient type of virtual beat for Destroy Lonely and Ken Carson. I made this entire beat from scratch and the melodies were using one shots and I'm not going to say too much. So with that being said, let's just hop into the sample. So for the tempo of these types of beats, typically these virtual beats I've noticed are between the tempo of like 140 to 160. For this one, I chose 153 beats per minute. So all the sounds that I use for this sample come from Synthetic's Void Volume 2 kit, and it's the one that includes the one shots of all the sounds. So the first sound that I got was this chord or like synth. For most, if not all the one shots, I went into the audio menu and I changed the mode to stretch so that way all the notes are the same length. And I also put an envelope on it using these settings and this just makes it so that the note just plays for as long as it's being played for in the MIDI. So I started by putting this chord pattern in, it's in F sharp minor. So I have the root notes of F sharp, which is the first note in the scale, and then D, which is the sixth note in the scale. So for the first chord, as I mentioned, the root note is F sharp. And then I put in the fifth note, which is C sharp in the scale. And I just kind of built this triad using the other scale degrees within F sharp, which just so happens to be a C sharp minor chord. And once I had that, I just took this, I just copied it down here, and then I just moved the middle note up by one half step. That's just how I have my base chord pattern and it just repeats for the second half of the pattern too. And then I just put in this filler note right here to transition it back into the first chord from the second one and just put in this to switch it up a little bit. So after I put in my initial chords and that pattern, I opened up this pluck. And with this one, I was just filling out some of the space that I have with the chords and give it a little bit of kind of a bounce to it. And with this one, I was just using the notes within the F sharp minor scale, but I wasn't thinking too much into the music theory. I was placing notes where I thought they sounded good. After putting in the plug, I went and grabbed this pad sound. And for this one, I just copied and pasted the chords from the first pattern into here. And I filled out the chords more according to the actual root notes themselves. And with this pattern, I was actually filling out the actual triad using the root note and then just putting in a few top notes to add a little bit of a different vibe to it. After putting down the pluck in the pad, I grabbed this arp sound. And with this, I just placed it on the root note of F sharp and just had it repeat every two measures. And lastly, after the ARP, I put in this sub bass sound and pretty much just followed the root notes of the chords and just added a couple switch ups. So going into the actual effects, I kept most of them dry. The only effects that I ended up adding was I put a reverb onto the first chords pattern and I just put a delay on the pluck just so it fills out the space a little more. So after I completed all the patterns, I went to the mixer and I armed each of the mixer tracks and then I hit Alt R on my keyboard and then hit start to render it out. Once I had that, I put each of the stems into the piano roll here and I just went into each of them and pitched it up by 200 sense so the key of the finished sample is in g sharp minor so once i had my stems rendered out and i pitched them i arranged the loop and rendered it out as an audio file so i imported the finished loop into a new project file and this is where i added the drums and finished the rest of the beat i kept the tempo the same the only difference that i had is that i pitched this up by another half step so the key of the final beat is a minor as for the drums i tried to keep these relatively simple because we already have a lot with the melodic aspect of it and i think all the drums that i got for this one was from filthy and lucrative drum kit for my first drum sound i got this clap next i put in my highest sound i started by making a bass on the c notes and then filling it out with the rest of the rolls and all that i started by just doing this first measure here and i also altered the velocities of the hi-hats as i went along for me that's just how i like to add a little bit of bounce to my hi-hats so once i had the first measure i just went in and kind of 
made a little bit of space on the second measure. And then once I had that, I copied it over and just deleted a couple of the notes and kept the velocities relatively the same. And once I had that, I copied it for all the eight measures. And then I put in my rolls, which I believe are using the one half step snap to grid. And I just put in this little low part here just to give a little bit of extra bounce to it. After my hi-hat, I put in the open hat and I put this on the fourth beat on the second and sixth measures. After the open hat, I put on this triangle perk and put it on the second beat on the second and sixth measures. After the open hat and the perk, I put in my snare. And as you can tell from this one, it's a really basic snare pattern. And then lastly, I put in my 808 pattern. And at first glance, this one looks really similar to the root notes of the chords pattern and kind of similar to that descend that we had in the first chords pattern. And that's because it pretty much just is that and adjusted for the key. Overall, as you can tell, I tried to keep these pretty simple. The only intricate aspects of this is that I put in a octave 808 there and then I just put in that little roll at the end like I said earlier and then I put in this reverse 808 so how you do that is you just go to the note that you want to slide up to and you adjust it to the correct length and then you want to double click on it and enable slide and once you do that you want to copy that same note and put it down on octave and then put the velocity all the way down once you have the layer of the two it'll slide into this note according to where you put it in the midi And in the arrangement, I didn't have this hit on every single eight bar. I only kept it in on the ones I wanted to lead into the next 808. So once I did that, I just finished arranging the rest of the beat. So my typical arrangement process is I'll just have an intro and then I'll have a hook, verse, bridge, and then repeat that same process of having a hook verse bridge until the end of the beat, which usually ends on a hook. And then I rendered out the entire thing and I opened it up into a new arrangement where I made a little bit of an intro for the beat. And so doing this is actually pretty easy. It seems like it would be a little bit difficult, but all you need is two automation clips. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna go up to your tempo here and you wanna set it to, you wanna set it to something lower than what it's at. So for this one, I chose 120 beats per minute to start with. I just went here and then I clicked copy value and then I reset it to 153. I selected the first 12 measures. I right clicked on it again and then clicked create automation clip and then once you have have this what you want to do is you want to right click on the end here and then click paste value and then I sloped it up by about 15% and then I just want to copy the value at the end and then paste it here so that it stays at 153 once we get to this point so it's just rising in tempo for the first eight measures and then once you have that you want to go to your audio clip you want to set it to stretch and you can either manually adjust the pitch like I did or what you could do is once you have the time stretching, you could set it to resample and just leave it as is. And it'll sound something like this. I wanted mine to sound a little different than that. So I just left it on stretch. And then what I ended up doing is I selected the first eight measures again. I went into the audio clip menu and I changed this range up to 12. And then I right clicked on the pitch wheel and hit create automation clip. And with this, I just did a little bit of math. So the end point here on the tempo is 78%. And then the starting point is 50%. So that's a difference of 28. And so for this one, it's at 50. And what I'm going to do is just subtract 28 from 50, which is 22%. So I'm going to right click on the left automation here, click type in value and just put in 0.22. And then once I do that, I'm just going to slope it to the same here, which is 15%. And once I have that, that's how I got the finished intro. All right. So I hope you all enjoyed it and we're able to take something away from it let me know any thoughts or feelings in the comments and that's going to wrap it up for this one i'll see you on the next one peace